We're uh, joined by John Bramnick, Assemblyman John Bramnick, leader of the Republican Party in the Assembly. Uh, we're here at the Business and Industry Association 2015 Public Policy Forum. Um, let me ask you, Assemblyman, um, after the general elections, th there was an election in November. Remember that one? I remember quite well. Um, your assessment as to what voters were thinking and why the election turned out the way it did? You had 80% of the electorate not show up. You had people who were mad with a lot of money. That means the public unions, uh, teachers union, and they spent millions in a very low turnout. So when people are mad and they have a lot of money, uh, they do really well in, in what we call swing districts, districts that actually Democrats, Democrats outnumber Republicans. I mean, that's basically what happened. This was not a voter recall of Republicans. This was a small elect part of the electorate with a lot of money. So, I mean, let's talk about 2016. I mean, there are a whole range of issues being discussed at the BAA Business and Industry Association uh, forum today. Legislators are here, business leaders. Uh, um, it's important stuff. There was a survey taken uh, that Michelle Sikirka, the uh, CEO here, will be talking about. Um, what would you say the most important issues facing not just the business community, but the entire, um, all citizens of the state of New Jersey? Well, it's taxes. Uh, I was just... Which taxes? You know, all the taxes. We're the highest tax state in the country. Now, I was just in Florida checking out of a supermarket, and the woman saw I was wearing something from New Jersey. She goes like this, oh, I used to be in Point Pleasant. I, I just couldn't afford New Jersey. Now my taxes are $600. You know, this is, these are not people who don't love New Jersey. They do. They just can't afford to live here. And that is a very dangerous path. And I have to tell you, sometimes you see a lot of politics in Trenton and not enough policy. And that, would have, that has to be the focus. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, uh, some of them talk about taxes. Let's break it down a little bit. The death tax situation. Uh, we are the only state in the nation, as some of them where there are two taxes, two death taxes, what are they? Inheritance and estate tax. What are they exactly? Well, one is for your family when they inherit money, they have to pay a substantial tax in addition to a federal tax. An inheritance tax is somebody outside the family. So the people receiving the money have to pay and the estate has to pay. That's a double tax that you see in maybe one other state. Okay, so what's the problem? We've had it for a long time. But that's the problem. The problem is Florida doesn't have the estate inheritance tax. So what we have to do is we have to get in line with other states because that's why people move. So if you have a multi-million dollar farm or you have a family business, you might have to sell that business just to pay the New Jersey estate and inheritance tax. In other states, you don't have to do that. So if you move your business to another state, it's more competitive. So big businesses look, when the, when the seniors in the company and older family members, they look to move the business because they're afraid of the death tax. So let's play this out a little bit. If in fact the death tax or one of the death taxes is in fact eliminated, wouldn't that mean I mean, think about this, folks. Uh, some have argued, uh, um, Assembly Speaker um, Prieto, who we've obviously spoken to, and others have argued, if you do away with one of those taxes or both, you lose the revenue that you would get from those people who die in New Jersey and pay those estate and inheritance taxes. What about that revenue? We already have a fiscal problem, and the argument is you make it worse. The surveys say that we are losing millionaires. We're losing hundreds of millionaires. So the question becomes... Why, because it's too expensive to die in the state? Of course, because if you have family business and you move to 48 other states, the estate and inheritance tax, these are either less or non-existent. So that's just one of the high taxes we have in the state that forces people to move. Okay. So let's, let's try this other one. Um, the Transportation Trust Fund. No, no secret to people watching us on public television, Fios, and listening on the radio as well. Uh, or on the internet, um, roads, bridges, um, either crumbling, fear of collapsing. There is not a stable source of funding. Been debated for a long time. The question is, why can't the legislature, together with the governor, figure out a stable source of funding? And why can't you simply, with New Jersey having one of the lowest gas taxes in the nation, with gases, gas prices being so low, just simply say, we're going to raise the gas tax. Why not, Assemblyman? Well, it isn't why not, because I said, if we could look at some other taxes to lower, and we at least send a message to people that we're looking at lowering taxes, I would support a stable revenue 
of a gas tax. I said that publicly. I got in trouble for that. But it at home, with people in the Republican Party, people in the Democratic Party, everybody. Anytime you say you'll favor any kind of tax increase, you're the bad guy. But I said it has to be consistent. Uh, we have to have some policy about lowering taxes. Now, here's the problem, and you know this as a former assembly person, that the Democrats have been in charge for 13 years. They could have passed some sort of tax. They could have passed some sort of st stable revenue source. They didn't do it. All of a sudden, they've now John Bram that comes into the discussion. The minute something's not passed, somehow they need my vote. So, look, you know the deal. The deal is they didn't want to pass any sort of revenue enhancer or tax while they were in charge before an election. And now, of course, you're going to see it done. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean you're going to see it done? Make a prediction for 2016 with respect to not only the gas tax, but more importantly for people watching, that those dollars will go to this thing called the Transportation Trust Fund, which funds the roads and bridges, which should hopefully give people a better sense that roads and bridges will be safer. Is that what you're saying? Well, everyone agrees that if we do pass a constitutional amendment, it has the money has to go into a lockbox. Explain that constitutional amendment. Well, right now, if you just pass a statute or a bill, during budget season, the administration or the legislature can do whatever they want with the money. It's not locked in any specific program. But if you do a constitutional amendment, that means if you pass a gas tax and it's constitutionally dedicated, no one, governor, legislator, can take that money out of that box. That's, I guarantee you that is going to happen. And I guarantee you, as soon as the crisis hits, there will be a solution. You mentioned uh, constitutional amendment. It's interesting. Uh, as we're down here in the uh, Princeton area in New Jersey, the Business and Industry Association, New Jersey Business and Industry Association, um, uh, hundreds of um, business leaders, legislators, uh, the leaders of the state are here talking about the future of the state's business community, creating jobs, uh, fueling the economy. The pension situation, the public employee pension situation, a crisis that uh, you and your colleagues have been trying to deal with. As we are here, uh, the president of the Senate, uh, Steve Sweeney, has introduced um, the idea, legislation that would call for a constitutional amendment that would, again, guarantee that the state would, in fact, make a pension contribution, pay their part, which he argues and other Democrats have said the state hasn't done, you say? I say, tell me where the money's coming from. Yeah, I, I, anybody can pass a constitutional amendment, then in a $32 billion uh, in uh, revenue for the state of New Jersey, which is our uh, basically our revenue to the state. You mean the state budget? State budget. Where are you getting the money from? He doesn't want to talk about reforms, any further reforms. So, oh, further reforms, euphemism for what? Give back more givebacks with state employees? Well, you have to begin to understand there's an $80 billion deficit here. Uh, trying to catch in the pension fund. Exactly. Trying to catch up on an $80 billion deficit is close to impossible. So my question to those who say they're on a constitutional amendment, just tell me, in a $32 billion budget, where are you going to get the money from? No one wants to answer that question. No reforms, but also uh, they're not saying where the money's coming from. So let's stay on this, Assemblyman. Um, you're saying that the Senate president, who's proposed that this item be put on the November 2016 ballot for voters to say whether they want the Constitution to be changed to say that the state must do this. You don't like the idea unless the president of the Senate and others say exactly where the dollars come from? Of course. Because at some point, if you have to pay $6 billion on a $32 billion budget, you have to identify the money. Now, we... And excuse me, the $6 billion would be the pension contribution. Or $7 billion. Because if you look at the future, these are the kind of numbers you're talking about to bring the, punch, the pension back to solvency. But let's talk about one other thing. There was a bipartisan panel that came up with suggestions. Governor Byrne's son was on it. They talked about what you had to do. The teachers union was on board. Uh, they signed this roadmap for reform, okay? And all of a sudden, that's disappeared. And I'm gonna tell you, at some point, we're gonna have to face the music here. You know, you don't wanna face it now, fine. But identify where the money's coming from. Final question on this. Um, Assemblyman, do you believe that the public employees who are involved in this pension situation do you believe that in spite of the 2011 agreement that was reached, the bipartisan agreement, that the givebacks that they were involved in, um, the concessions that they made, do you believe that there are more concessions that need to be made by public employees? What I believe is what the bipartisan panel said. We don't have much choice. Now, you know something? I run a business. 
I try to give people raises all the time. I try to give them bonus. I like people. All I'm trying to say is we need to save this system. And just by having political arguments and saying we're going to pass constitutional amendments, that may not save the system based on what our own bipartisan panel said. So, look, I'm just living in reality. And it's not about public, it's not that I dislike public unions. I went to public high school, all right? I, I love my teachers. I love teachers. I love police officers. I like firefighters. But there has to be a realistic discussion here. And if you're not going to have a realistic discussion, it's just going to be a political battle, you're not going to solve anything. Final question, Simon. Um, keeping New Jersey and safe as we move into 2016. Um, terrorism, the role of state government. Well, I think that uh, Chris Christie, coming from the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, being a federal prosecutor and being a governor for six years, uh, I think we have a strong leader in that regard. And that's one area that the legislature needs to show strong leadership and make sure that, you know, we do everything we can to keep people in New Jersey safe without uh, discrimination. We have to do it in a fair and fundamentally fair way. We can strike that balance, Assemblyman? Oh, we absolutely, we've been doing this in this country for 200 years, uh, respecting rights and also uh, investigating uh, terrorism. And I think that's one of the reasons we need police to have more resources in terms of their, uh, their ability to fight the terrorism. Thank you, Assemblyman. Thanks, Steve. Good to see you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, the New Jersey Education Association, the law firm of Gibbons PC, New Jersey Resources, NJM, NJ Best, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.